Hi, this is Julian and welcome for this new tutorial. I'm going to show you how to boost your colors and we're going to do this in Lightroom and probably in the next episode I will show you how to do it in camera and Photoshop because we've got hundreds <laughs> of ways to do it. Uh, really, you've got tons of different methods to do it. Uh, this one is going to be in Lightroom only. So uh, you can do this on pretty much every kind of photos. Probably not portrait because with portraits you may need a different technique. So I've got four photos here. They are very different. Uh, one of which is a close up. One of which is a mid range uh, subject. The, this one is going to be a castle on a hill uh, in Scotland. So this is pretty much a landscape. And this one is a cityscape. It's like um, with something on top of it because it's underexposed. So it's not the same situation. This one is a bit underexposed, this one is completely underexposed and this will trigger different ways in the uh, retouching process, with different ways of uh, handling the colors. So we're going to take the first one. This one is very easy. Uh, I've got this motorbike. Let's switch to the develop module by clicking on develop and it's been taken with a 6D, Canon 6D. It's a bit soft focus. It's not immensely sharp, but this is not the subject of the photo. Uh, it's been taken with a Helios. Uh, it's like, it's an old uh, lens. Maybe some of you know uh, this kind of lens. It's an old lens from the USSR uh, when back in the days they were trying to basically copy Zeiss <laughs> and you can find those for a very cheap price, uh, especially if you're in Europe. Uh, I'm in Berlin right now and it's very easy for me to find these, these lenses because, well, obviously I'm in Eastern Germany, so we've got a, a lot um, available on the, on the market. So for 50, 60 bucks, you've got a good um, good hipster lens, basically. Right, so it's self-focused, it doesn't matter, but you can see the colors uh, are not very saturated. Uh, the subject may be a bit more interesting uh, if there was a tiny bit more saturation in the colors. So in Lightroom, well, there is a clear way to do it. It's to go to Vibrance or Saturation. The Vibrance is a relative uh, tool. It means that depending on the actual values of the saturation for each pixel, it's going to increase or decrease the value. So if a pixel is already very saturated, it's not going to be saturated anymore. Otherwise, uh, you're going to clip the values. If we look at this part, let's go switch. Yeah, on the left, we've got this um, not so appealing motorbike, <laughs> but it's green. It's pretty much very green. And if I saturate it too much, some shade of greens will disappear. Let me show you by zooming 400%. We're going to go here. If I go 100%, I have a smooth transition between the different shade of greens. Okay, we've got a vivid green, light green, bright green, um, a darker green. If I use plus 100 saturation instead, we may start to lose some values because they're all going to clip to something really saturated, especially uh, in the background with the trees and on the edge here. So if it's already saturated, the vibrant is not going to saturate it too much. That's why vibrant is usually uh, a better choice when it comes to boost your color. So as you can see, it takes three seconds. If you use the official tool to boost your color, it's called vibrant. It takes three, four, five seconds, right? You just play it with the slider a bit. If you want something really saturated, it's up to you because it's quite subjective, but this is a plus 100 vibrance and this is a plus 100 saturation. And as you can see on some part of the green scene in the background, it is already too much. For this kind of photo, it's pretty easy, right? There is not much to do except um, just having a look at the background, not to saturate it too much. Now, if we go on the next one, this one is a macro. It's a tiny bit underexposed. So I'm going to push up the exposure a bit. And then again, if I go to vibrance, as you can see, there is not a strong difference. There is a difference, but it's not too strong. And in this kind of situation, maybe, maybe you want, uh, you want more saturation. This is where saturation is handy because it allows you to go further in the saturation. And here, for example, saturation plus 100. It's a good example where saturation plus 100 is okay, right? I didn't clip that many pixels, pretty much. Well, yeah, I would say maybe none of them is is going too far when it comes to saturation. But because the original picture is really desaturated, 
going plus 100 on saturation on this particular shot is actually okay, right? So let's switch back to uh, zero and use the vibrance instead. Right, this is uh, this is more under control. It's not too saturated, but maybe it's not enough. So I just wanted to show you. It's not because a tool is in the way it is described. It seems to be better in pretty much all cases. In some cases, the one that seems maybe a bit dangerous, the one that is not maybe um, some, the tool I would suggest all the time. Well, for this particular photo, it's actually better, right? The saturation is, uh, according to my test, um, it is doing a better job because now I have vivid colors. And I think this kind of scenery um, works better with vivid um, colors, a really saturated shot, right? Okay, so it's up to you, but I wanted to show you this example. Now we're gonna switch to this one. And this is where, obviously, there is a bit of work to do on the exposure, and speci uh, especially in the shadows. So the exposure itself is okay, maybe a tiny bit more, but the problem is more in the shadows. So let's just push the shadows a bit. Right, so now the base is a lot better to work with, and we can work on the colors. Now, on this photo, I would say the sky um, can be saturated a bit, but what I need to work on is the foreground. So I would need to work differently between those two. However, if I use the Vibrant, they're all gonna be boosted equally. It's relative, but still the sky is being pushed the same way as the foreground. So I'm gonna double click on Vibrant, and instead what I'm going to use is the Paintbrush. So in the Paintbrush, let's just reset all the values back to zero by double clicking on the sliders. And I have a saturation slider. Unfortunately, I don't have a vibrant slider in the paintbrush. Don't ask me why, because I can't see any reason why we don't have this, but maybe in Lightroom 7 or CC 2018. I don't know when you're going to see this video, but as I'm recording right now, it's 17th of October 2017. It's actually the day before Adobe Max, so maybe tomorrow uh, they're going to be a new Lightroom and the vibrance is finally going to be in the paintbrush. So I don't see any engineering re reason why the uh, vibrance is not in the um, in the brush but yeah so instead we're going to use a reasonably um, pushed saturation on the right so let's say 30 and i can paint on the sky so i can saturate the sky a bit more so it's a bit more blue i can activate the auto mask so i'm sure not to go onto the castle so let's make sure the cross at the middle of the brush is not touching any of the foreground subject. Okay, so now if I go, if I put the mouse over, I can see my mask. It's not mega precise, but let's retouch it a tiny bit. And again, making sure, making sure the cross is not touching any of the foreground. And as you can see, it's 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 pretty it's pretty good. Okay, so I have a setting of 33. Now I can click on new, and instead. I'm going to put a value of 70 because I want the colors of the foreground. I'm probably going to go 100 actually. Right, so it was autumn in Scotland and this subject would be a lot more interesting with vivid colors on the foreground. And now I have two different settings, one for the foreground and one for the sky. So the problem is we don't have vibrance, but if you uh, manage to get your settings right when it comes to saturation, saturation will do a good job. Just make sure not to go too crazy on the slider. So 88 is okay for the foreground. I think 30 is enough for the sky. Now, if you want to go crazy for the sky as well, you can push up maybe up to 50. Don't go all the way because, yeah, as you can see, it's, it's, it's too much. So usually I like to uh, try different settings for the foreground and the background when it comes to boost my colors. So if Vibrant is doing a good job, yeah, fine, no problem, it takes five seconds. But most of the times it, require, it requires a bit more work and at least two brushes with different settings. Now let's switch to the, to the last picture. So this one is tricky because actually this picture is very desaturated. The only color we have is behind the uh, TV tower here in Berlin. Uh, it's the sunset, and we have a bit of orange and, and magenta, but pretty much everything else is de desaturated. It's, well, it's underexposed, obviously, but also very desaturated. So let's switch back to the global settings, 
and again the the exposure in itself is okay it's just that the shadows are obviously underexposed right shadows are too black so let's push up shadows and maybe bring a bit more light in the picture but this is pretty much what we're gonna do it's already too much because if you want if you want a picture to feel like it's sunset it needs to be underexposed otherwise it's not a sunset anymore so maybe just something like this so we have a bit more details to see but don't use too much on the shadows so now if we use vibrance as you can see these pixels here are tinted in blue which is not exactly what I want because in the real life like if I go if I go outside in this place I know for sure these buildings they're not blue right they're gray it's just that tinted in blue because in the shadows at this time of the day the blue channel will uh, will be a greater value than the other shadows like when I put my cursor right now um, I can't do that at the same time but if you look up there I have now a blue channel of 28%, green channel of 18% and a red channel of 16% and it's pretty, it's pretty much the case everywhere I go uh, on these buildings except the one that are facing the light so if I use the vibrance too much it's gonna turn the entire picture in something really blue and I don't think it's correct it's not really appealing to me so I don't like it but it can be just my taste but also it's not what it looks like at this time of the day so it doesn't do any justice to uh, the scenery here in Berlin so this is why it gets tricky because if I use the vibrance it's not gonna be any good uh, if I use the saturation it's gonna be even worse uh, what I'd like to have is something a bit more saturated on the buildings and with nice colors in the background and this is where you're gonna have to do uh, some paint brush some heavy pen brush and not only with, with saturation but also with a um, with the white balance let me explain if we go to the paint brush and use saturation so for sure uh, let's use the mouse wheel we can paint this part here of the picture and make the sky a bit more a bit more colorful I'm still using the auto mask so then again with the cross I'm making sure I'm not touching any of the foreground not touching the uh, the tower not touching the buildings and if I go over right we have a good start I'm trying to do it as fast as possible but this type of retouching typically would require a bit more time but because I don't want you to spend an hour watching me uh, masking the picture I'm gonna do it quick so I'm sorry if the uh, finishing touches are not quite there um, you can take a bit more time to do it at home but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm trying to do something uh, it's quick and dirty basically but it works now if I put my over all right so we, we we're almost there okay so we, this is good so now I can saturate the background without touching the buildings and I think now we get that it's the sunset okay and maybe if I put the exposure down a bit it would work better and I can see now the spot that I missed for my mask so the auto mask is a really cool feature just aim correctly not touching with the cross uh, the foreground and okay so this is a, a bit more interesting as a sunset now still the buildings they look boring because they're gray and not really saturated now if I saturate them they're gonna turn blue so how are we gonna do it so we're going to create a new mask and let's paint let's say this one for example so it's going to be saturated in blue okay and we're gonna do it this way and we're gonna do the tower as well so now the cross has to stay inside the foreground as you can see I went too far okay and it turns blue now because I'm on a paintbrush I can also use the temp it's the white balance basically okay if I push if I push the slider on the left as you can see I can saturate a bit more the colors but I can lower the effect of the blue okay so if I push the slider a tiny bit to the right now the colors are a bit more saturated I have a bit of blue which is fine but it's not turning entirely into a blue building so I can sort of compensate the effect of my saturation so usually I would recommend in pictures that are underexposed because it's a sunset that you use a local 
adjustment and not a global adjustment. If you use a global adjustment, all your buildings are going to turn blue. It's going to be quick, but yeah, I personally, I don't really like it. Now, this takes a bit more time, but the result is a lot more interesting because you, you can have a control over what you're doing. You can control the aspect of the foreground and the background separately, and you can also control the way your picture is actually saturated by the tool, which is always better. Now, what I would do for this picture, I would create a third one, which would be focused on the trees and for everything that is green in the picture. And again, I can choose precisely the way I saturate these pixels and I can compensate with the temperature if I want it to look uh, a bit more green or a bit more yellow. And this is being done with the temperature slider. Okay, so this is how I boost my colors uh, it's basically how I do it in a nutshell, it would require a bit more time to explain all the details and all the tricky details. But I think uh, in 15 minutes you've got here a good method on how to boost your colors in Lightroom. I will do a version of this tutorial for camera and Photoshop because we can go a bit further in Photoshop obviously using the adjustment layers. Uh, but that would be in a different tutorial. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel uh, so you can get a notification about my new tutorials. I have one tutorial every week. Don't forget to have a look at my website. This is where you can download all, all the source files because I'm giving away for you to train uh, my raw files. So all the four pictures you've been seeing in, that, uh, in this video, you can download them. You just have to uh, register to the newsletter um, and you can download the CR2 files and it's not always CR2 because I shoot sometimes with a Sony camera, but you've got the raw files so you can follow along exactly in the same conditions. And this is also where you can find my portfolio and my premium tutorials. Right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.